Hi. I hope you had a great holiday. Really, I um, hope you're having a great new year. I hope it's been a good year for all of you. All several dozen of you who probably watch this. Anyway, um, something kind of kind of sad happened to me during this uh, during my present opening process. Well, not even sad, really. I wouldn't call it that. I mean, lots of more serious things are happening to people around the holidays. There's always a tragedy you hear about on the news. This is something very small. It's nothing to worry about, but um, it just struck me as kind of, well... Okay. I was reading Batman comics recently. I, I haven't been buying many DC comics since the uh, New 52 reboot. It sort of personally offended me. But um, the Batman run of comics has been especially good. And uh, I checked out one of the storylines recently, uh, Death in the Family. I, I just bought this one issue, and I've just been catching glimpses of it out of, my, out of the corner of my eye in the, photo, in, the, um, in the comic shops. And it seemed like a really good story, really solid. And um, the reviews seem to confirm that. Uh, I only ever really bought this last issue, where the, uh, the Joker confronts Batman in a cave system, having kidnapped the rest of... Well, I, I won't spoil, for you, spoil it for you if you haven't read it. Um, but uh, I really liked it. I really did. And uh, so I decided I wanted to get the <clears throat> trade paperback for Christmas. And uh, I did. Nice, fat trade paperback. Really fancy, you know, covers that are covered and... Hardbound. I actually prefer paperback, but um, this is a hardcover edition. Uh, it was, you know, this is great in any case. Um, kind of neat having a hardcover. But you know what? I, I noticed something when I was reading through it. It, it wasn't quite like I remembered it. There was a line, or a few lines, a, a bit of a speech near the end. Um, I'll go a little into spoilers here. Uh, after Batman has vanquished the Joker um, yet again, I remembered in particular this line from the original comic that I bought. And uh, I really liked it. it. It was Batman explaining why he doesn't kill the Joker, because the Joker called him on it. Like, like oh, oh, what possible reason could you have not to kill me? Oh, because then I win. I love that excuse. But it's just an excuse, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? There's a reason why you keep me alive. Uh, that's uh, not a good Joker impression. I'm capable of better. But anyway, um, Batman later tells Alfred, his friend, in, in privacy, that the reason he doesn't kill the Joker... Again, spoilers, you should read this, or if you haven't, then mute the next few seconds, or not, I don't care so much about what happened. Anyway, he tells Alfred that the reason, the real reason, he doesn't kill the Joker, well, he does have principles, of course, but there's also this, he knows in his gut, if he kills the Joker, the city will just send him someone worse. It'll replace him. Maybe it'll just send the Joker back in some new form. Because let's face it, that's what happens when you kill a major supervillain. Someone else comes along. The city, in this case, the real corrupting influence in Gotham City is simply the writers of the comic. So, he's absolutely right. And I just thought that was, um, that was a really neat little moment of his awareness of the nature of his universe. It's not quite meta, he's not breaking the fourth wall or anything, it's just this sense that he has of things, that there's something about Gotham City that, that just makes up for almost anything he does, and um... Well, I thought it was a really good speech, but... When I read through this... They had removed the speech, they changed the lines. See, in... In the last few pages, he's, he's talking, and the, the lines are different. They changed it in the trade paperback, hardcover, whatever. And, and I didn't read all through the other comics in this, in this story arc. I don't know how much else they changed. Did they change anything else? Probably. You know, it's not just that I like that particular part of it, and that I kind of become attached to it. I've been looking forward to reading that line in context after reading the rest of the story arc. 
it just... When you read a comic book, you believe in it. Even the, even the bad comics, usually, you, you believe in it. There's this reality which takes place, which covers your imagination. I decided a long time ago that as I worked on uh, Zebra Girl, on my work, on my comic, on my stories, as I improved, as I wrote, I decided that I wouldn't go back and change things. Even if I saw that I made a dumb mistake or a typing error or something, um, or misdrawn something, left out one of Sandra's lines, one of the stripes on her skin, which I have done many times, I wouldn't change it. I want for people to see my progression, warts and all, not just because it's honest, but because that's what I gave to people at first. Now, I, I haven't always done this. I've broken my own rule once or twice. Yeah, the camera crapped out. But as I was saying, I've broken my own rule once or twice. But, um, I believe that the nature of art and artists is that when you make something, when you give it to people, well, it is, by its very nature, a gift, and you can't take back a gift. When you make a work of art, when you give it to the world, it becomes theirs, it becomes the audience, it belongs to them, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It's like George Lucas, when he started messing with the original trilogy, I can't approve of that. I never have. I mean, I've heard people defend him, saying, well, it's his trilogy, he should have the right to do what he wants with it, but it's not. It belongs to the people who originally saw it. Those people have a right to enjoy the work of art that was the original Star Wars trilogy. That's what they saw. That's what they fell in love with. That's the reality that was given to them. And you can't just change a reality without making it fake. And, you know... This story, Batman, A Death in the Family, where the Joker comes out of hiding, his face torn off, and, and, and goes on a, on a worse rampage than ever, you know, I, I, I believe in it. When I just came in on the end, just buying the last issue of the arc, I bought into it. The characters played out in my head that what they did mattered to me. You know, that, that's part of imagination. But seeing it in trade paperback... Someone went back and rewrote the lines for what I guess they thought was better. And that makes it seem less real to me. It's like, DC has been doing this lately. They, they've been changing continuity they, in, in reprints, in collections, and trade paperbacks, and hardcovers. They've been changing lines because they've been stumbling over themselves to cover their asses because of the New 52, because it's all so confusing. And as a result, the DC Universe has become less real. It's become ethereal and malleable. These things are supposed to matter to us. That's what the writers want. That's what they're trying to achieve. If it matters to them, if it matters to them what they're giving us, then it should matter that when we read it in the comic for the first time, that's when it's real. And they don't have the right to just go back and change it. Because that betrays something. Oh, there I go again. I'm, I'm being too serious about all this. I know, I know, but I am passionate about this. I mean, this is, my, this is my work. This is what I do for a living. Well, barely. I'm dirt poor. <clears throat> but anyway, you see my point, right? It's just, if I went back and changed Zebra Girl, rewrote the archives, or even, or even with redrew things, there would be people, I'm sure, who wouldn't like that, who would want to see it the way it was, because I've been told that they enjoyed it. And I just wish that the writers of mainstream comics could demonstrate to me that they cared as strongly. Okay.